November 17th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Revelation, Chapter 6, from the New Testament. I looked on when the Lamb opened one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a thunderous voice, Come! So I looked, and here came a white horse. The one who rode it had a bow, and he was given a crown, and as a conqueror he rode out to conquer. Then when the Lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come! And another horse, fiery red, came out, and the one who rode it was granted permission to take peace from the earth, so that people would butcher one another, and he was given a huge sword. Then when the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature saying, Come! So I looked, and here came a black horse. The one who rode it had a balanced scale in his hand. Then I heard something like a voice from among the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat will cost a day's pay, and three quarts of barley will cost a day's pay. But do not damage the olive oil and the wine. Then when the lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come! So I looked, and here came a pale green horse. The name of the one who rode it was Death, and Hades followed right behind. They were given authority over a fourth of the earth to kill its population with the sword, famine, and disease, and by the wild animals of the earth. Now when the Lamb opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been violently killed because of the word of God, and because of the testimony they had given. They cried out with a loud voice, How long, Sovereign Master, holy and true, before you judge those who live on the earth and avenge our blood? Each of them was given a long white robe, and they were told to rest for a little longer, until the full number was reached of both their fellow servants and their brothers, who were going to be killed, just as they had been. Then I looked when the Lamb opened the sixth seal, and a huge earthquake took place, the sun became as black as sackcloth made of hair, and the full moon became blood red. And the stars in the sky fell to the earth like a fig tree dropping its unripe figs when shaken by a fierce wind. The sky was split apart like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved from its place. Then the kings of the earth, the very important people, the generals, the rich, the powerful, and everyone slave and free hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains they said to the mountains and to the rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of the one who is seated on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb because the great day of their wrath has come and who is able to withstand it god as you know obviously I've been through some natural disasters in my lifetime, uh, including Hurricane Andrew, and we have a really bad disaster happening right now in the Philippines, where possibly over 10,000 people were killed. And in all of those situations, I see the same behavior. I see this incredible trauma happen to a group of people, a city, a nation, and I see panic arise and Maslow's hierarchy of needs goes straight to the very bottom where people don't have food, water, or shelter. And because they don't have their basic needs, then their primal needs take over. And there's not a lot of thought given to killing somebody else to get what you want. We know that some of the aid trucks that are being sent to the Philippines right now are being met with gunfire. I watched something similar happen when I was in Florida right after Hurricane Andrew and people were looting uh, and there was gunfire. We're seeing people trampled for food in the Philippines. We're seeing them dig up earth and take apart um, metal pipes so that they can get to water because they have none right now. We, sh we see the plush plushness of our earth and our living conditions 
deteriorate to the point that our own sense of values deteriorate. God, I know when the true end of the world happens, that it is going to be along the lines, just on a grander scale, of some of the things that we're starting to see in this earth already. This every man out for himself, this willing to kill for what you want. No consideration for anyone else. No wonder the important people and the kings and the rich people want the rocks to hide them and kill them. Because how in the world can they stand themselves when these things start to happen? We know that the first wave uh, given to death in Hades will destroy a fourth of the earth. Then we have trumpets that are coming up and that's another third of the earth and then finally the bowls come and every last remaining person uh, is destroyed so when the first wave comes with the pale green horse and death in Hades these deaths for 25% of the world that population will be killed it says by the sword so war uh, famine which we're already seeing an incredible amount of uh, disease. So possibly some sort of plague type of situation. Uh, and by the wild animals of the earth. So if we take today's world population, we're looking at almost 1.8 billion people wiped out in that first wave of the end of the world. That would be like if every single person in the United States and every single person in India were suddenly killed, just gone. And when we see that many people wiped out and we see the, the famine across the world start to happen, we're going to see horrible things start to take place where people's sense of entitlement and power and ego take over. People who have the rich people and the people of power will want to ensure that they keep that. And the people who don't have it, they're going to want to make sure that those people don't, don't have it and continue not to have it. And I definitely see when they're talking about the, the people who have been killed by talking to other people about you, God, and, and they're underneath that altar and they're saying, you know, when are you going to avenge our blood? And and they're told to rest for a little while longer because some of their fellow uh, servants and their brothers still haven't been killed, martyred like they have. And I definitely see this happening with this, this first wave and as will continue as, as the world's destroyed, where the dynamics of choosing this world over you, God, will get wider and wider in that chasm. That as we go out and speak about you, Right now, we do it in comfort and in safety. Uh, our only fear tends to be what somebody else will think about us. We don't have that fear that we'll lose our life like people in other parts of the world. But I fully suspect, based upon what we're reading here, that during those times across the world, people who talk about you uh, will be killed for their faith by the other people who are trying so desperately to hold on to the world. God, I pray for the people who are attracted to the sparkly things of this, of this world, which is every single one of us. I am. It's hard not to be seduced by the things of this world. I always say the devil has a pretty easy job uh, in our current situation. We are so incredibly spoiled with our comforts and our luxuries. And even if we think we don't come from money, we have way more money than most of the people in the rest of the world. God, I pray for us to understand that your choice to end the world can happen at any time. You are in control of that. You know the day that it will happen. And allow us to realize the urgency of sharing the message of you with other people who may be being seduced by the sparkly things of this world, the power, the riches, the brands, the entitlements. God, I was that way for such a long time. 
Everything that the world could possibly offer to me, I took. And I loved it. And I thought it made me happy. But it did exactly the opposite. God, allow my heart to seek only you. That right now I love telling people about you. If I could do it 24-7, that's all I would want to do. But allow that intensity and that desire to talk to people about you. Stay true. Even in the face of death. That if somebody wants to kill me for talking to other people about you. That I won't deny that. And I won't deny you. God, I watch so many people right now afraid to tell other people about you. And the only reason is because they're afraid that people won't like them anymore. They won't be friends with them anymore. What will they think of me? They're people pleasers. God, I only want to please you. In this life, in heaven with you, worshiping you, glorifying you. And if that takes losing my life, that is the least I can do for you. Strengthen my resolve, God. Provide that urgency in my life. Allow me opportunities to share about you. Provide me endurance and strength. God, I love you so much. And I pray for my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ that they will have that same urgency and desire to tell others about you. We pray this in your son's name. Amen.